In today's video, I'm going to talk about how poor posture can impact your low back and how you can retrain your nervous system and improve your posture and lower back comfort. In my previous videos, and I talked about what posture is and what ideal posture really means. What it really means is that you have the ability to move freely. So you're not stuck in limited habitual patterns. And people think and understand the posture from a very static uh, structural view, right? Structure, static, you fix it, you correct uh, uh, body alignment as a way to change your posture. But that doesn't really work if you have done that before because they're not really understanding the posture as really a function of your movement patterns, right? And how you actually use your bodies in the day-to-day -day activities. So what it really means to improve and change your posture is that you really retrain your movement patterns. So you have better ability to move more freely. And that's what you're going to practice today. And we talk about how poor posture and your movement patterns and it impacts your lower back functions. And everybody's different. Everybody have a different movement patterns and different movement biases and uh, habitual patterns. So some people, as they are sitting on a chair or standing, and then they tend to, uh, they tend to have the pelvis a little bit more forward. So therefore, their lower back is more extended. So constantly, they are stressing their lumbar spine in an extension, right? whether it's in a sitting or standing. And another posture or the, the um, movement bias that people have is the opposite. So they tend to tilt the pelvis backwards so that lower back is more rounded as they're standing or maybe sitting. Sitting is more common, right? It's easy to tilt the pelvis back and then people stuck in that, what it's called the posterior pelvic tilt with the rounded and flexed lumbar spine. So when that adds up, and if you spend hours in those habitual patterns, and also uh, there's something uh, left and right side of bias too, and we all have a bias leaning towards one direction or the other directions, and sometimes more pronounced than uh, another time. And some people to a degree shift over to one side more as they're standing and sitting both. So here you can see the impact, right? So I am putting more weight on my left hip and it impacts my lower back too. My left side and my right side, right? So my right side is a little bit more shortened and the left side is more overstretched. Exaggerating the patterns and maybe this way, this way. So then you have the combination rolling the pelvis back or extending through the low back. And whatever your habitual patterns is, that people spend a lot of time in their habitual patterns. So that's really not a good posture. And the solution would be, it's not about finding the center and then fix your body in the center. No, it is about to retrain your nervous system. You have to let your brain know this is your patterns and so that you can start to explore outside of whatever the patterns that you are stuck in. It's not, the goal is not to be centered all the time, but the goal is for your brain to recognize your habitual patterns, then starts to retrain yourself out of the same patterns. So do you have the ability to move in all different places so that you're less likely to be in the same place for a long time. So in the next few minutes, you're going to practice a short movement lesson, which is going to help your nervous system recognize your patterns and then retrain you out of that patterns as you are going to explore a different range of the motions. Okay. And this movement lesson can be done sitting on the floor like I am right now, cross leg sitting, or if this is too hard and if you are too restricted and to be sitting on the floor and to move your hips while you're sitting on the floor, and then I recommend you sit on the chair. 
but I'm going to demonstrate sitting on the floor. So it really depends on you and your comfort. If you're so compromised in your movements on, on the floor, then don't, uh, don't do it here. Do it in sitting, sitting on a chair, all right? So very simple lesson. Please watch my demonstration and listen to my verbal guidance first. And then once you're done watching, and please rewind and go back, and it starts to follow my verbal guidance without watching my movements. Actually, with your eyes closed, bring attention to your body so that you can sense your body and feel your body much more clearly when you have your eyes closed and only listen to my verbal guidance. So here's how it's gonna go. While you're sitting on the floor, you can have your hands just next to your hips, like so. Not too far out, not too close. If this is hard on your wrist, you can make a fist and do that. And then, so I'm going to start the movement of tilting the pelvis forward and back, right? Small movements. You're not really making a big uh, arching through the low back and just the gentle movements going forward, rolling the pelvis forward and back. You can assist the movements with your hands with your fist as well. Like so. You're going forward and back. As you roll your pelvis back and you can round the entire spine, soften your chest. And then as you roll your pelvis forward and think about elongating your spine rather than just shortening your spine, arching your spine. So think about elongating your spine. Softening your spine, rounding your spine. Okay, so go through these movements without any force. Gentle movements, forward and back. Stay within the small range. You don't have to go as far as you can. But the focus is the pelvis moving and then the entire spine is involved in these movements. Make sure you breathe easily. And once you're done a few times, and then now you're going to make small circles. You move your pelvis in small circles. Same with your arms. You can assist the movements with your arms as well. So I'm drawing a circle with my pelvis. You can start with a clockwise or counterclockwise. But it's not just a movement of the pelvis. You allow your entire torso to move as well. So you have to really Soften yourself, your body, your rib cage, and your spine. Don't tense your neck. Allow your neck, allow your jaw to move freely. Like so. Then you can change the directions. And once again, you find if you find difficulty making a smooth movement with your pelvis and the hips right now sitting on the floor, Please do try from a chair. It's the same movements, except you don't have to have your arms here. You can just move your pelvis while you're sitting on a chair. Here. So if you haven't changed the direction of the circle, you may change the direction of the circle. And as far as how many times to do, maybe 10 times to 15 times should be enough. But more importantly, you focus on quality of the movement, smoothness of the movement. So repeat the movements until the quality improves. So it becomes smoother and you can stop. You might notice a change maybe after fewer, only after done five repetitions, then you stop, that's enough. Right? But do it slowly, not like slowly, like how I am moving, okay? Simple movements. Again, it's really important that you pay attention to your body. Now, my body, your body. 
sense your body, feel your body, and then the changes happen. Why is it important? Because by bringing your attention to your body, your brain is engaged, right? I mean, that's how you actually integrate your nervous system, connect your mind, your brain with your body. And that's how changes happen from the inside, right? So after you're done, both directions about 10 times or until the movement quality improves. And then you can stop and you can pay attention now as you're sitting or standing, just stand comfortably or sit comfortably, chair sitting on the floor and notice your posture, right? Not just from a sense of like alignment, right? Static alignment, but from more um, your internal sensation, how does it feel? Quality of your posture. How do you measure that? What about, how is it related to your breathing right now? Okay, not only you may feel just upright, but also you may feel lightness around your neck or around your back. So how's your back feel right now? All right, so you may notice a difference and maybe habitually you tend to sit more pelvis tilted back or the other way or shifted one direction or the other direction, you may find yourself more center now because you are conscious in trying to keep your body in the center. But as a result of going through these movements, allowing your nervous system to integrate that, then nervous system starts to adjust your body. So now you have the ability to move more easily, more freely and notice the changes in your posture, in your breathing, and then as you walk around your room, you may notice a difference in quality of the walking. Not only your back feels better, not only your posture feels better, your walking probably feels better and easier and lighter. So let me know how you feel right now in the comments. And then if you like this video and please support my channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. And if you want to feel good again in your body and please watch my free masterclass, the link is in the description. You can apply for my comprehensive movement course inside the masterclass. If you want to dive deep into understanding your body from the inside and becoming the best expert of your body. So I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.